What exactly does Sean Monaghan bring to the Blue Jackets? Well, we asked someone who's watched him play for a couple of seasons, and we're going to talk about that on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. You're Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every single day. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms, over on YouTube and on Sirius X. Um, I also have to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase terms do apply um we've got a, a special guest on uh, on today's show uh, i wanted to talk to someone who has watched sean monahan play in detail for the last couple of seasons so uh, i've got one half of locked on canadians uh, laura saba hopped on the show to talk a little bit about what she loves about sean monahan what blue jackets fans can expect from him and uh, what kind of impact he is going to have on the team uh, and then after that um i want to talk a little bit about um the other kind of quote unquote big free agent signing for Columbus, which is uh, Jack Johnson, is coming home. Uh, so we'll uh, I'll get into my conversation with Laura, and then after that, I'll be back, just me, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about Jack Johnson. But first, we're going to talk all about Sean Monahan. I figured the best person to talk to about Sean Monahan is, in fact, someone that watched him play for a good part of the last two seasons. Uh, so. One of my very favorite people in the world. I've got Laura Saba, one half of Locked On Canadians. And uh, she's going to tell us about what Sean Monaghan was like in Montreal, what Blue Jackets fans should expect, should we be excited. Um, and there's like a couple of things that I specifically want to want to touch on about, about Monaghan's game. But Laura, welcome on back. We always love to have a Locked On Blue Jackets, Locked On Canadians uh, squad cast. Um, it Sean has Monaghan. been a while. It's been a minute. I feel like it's, it's yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like November. Yeah. I want to say yeah. it's been a minute. I'm excited. But I'm to always do. happy to come back. Yeah, it's always always a blast. Um, Sean Monahan. Yes. In Columbus. Yes. Um, he really kind of came into his came back to himself this season. Yes. With the with the Canadians. Absolutely. Like, how what what was it like going from kind of the season before last where he only played what I think 25 26 games to this season where he actually ended up playing 83 games between the Canadians and the Jets um in the regular season like what was how notable was the jump between last season's Monaghan and this season's Monaghan I think for me the biggest thing was when the Montreal Canadiens first traded for him uh every single Calgary fan was like Good luck. If he can stay healthy, like he's great. But if he can stay healthy, that was a big if, right? And so we got to experience that. But I think the first season was more of a presence thing. Like it wasn't just about having depth. It was more about having his presence as well because he was able to create chances and he was able to kind of put the play together and kind of make it a bit more cohesive in moments when it was unraveling. Like for me, like not necessarily like a cleanup person, but sort of, he felt like the adult in the room uh, a lot of times um, in the lineup. And so like, even then Canadians fans had kind of fallen in love with his game, but this past season, he was a massive presence. And I know we don't like intangibles, but I do believe in some of them. And he really did. Like, I think that was the, like if you talk to the Canadians themselves, that's what they'll point to more than anything else is the intangibles. You kind of have to remember that he's only 29, right? When the Blue Jackets signed him for that contract, a lot of people were criticizing the term and the money. I would say that it really is only related to his injuries because I feel like he's still a forward that is in that age where like he's still in his prime. He's not necessarily declined yet. Like, yes, it is kind of he's getting in his older years, et cetera, et cetera. But he became such a crucial part of this team in terms of driving play, which was really surprising. And the fans loved him. The players loved him. When he got traded, it was a massive loss. And we were all writing fan fiction about him coming back next year. You know? <laughs> but thanks, Blue Jackets. Hey, we've reunited him with his best friend. Like yes. the content is going to be really good. <laughs> um, and that was, that's something that is kind of like, you do talk about like the presence and the intangibles. And like, that was a big thing for me with bringing Monaghan in is again, 
He's only 29. He's not, you know, some grizzled veteran, except he has kind of the veteran, a veteran and the Canadian persona. obviously have just recently lost, you know, a lot of big pieces of their kind of veteran presence. Shea Weber yes. leaving, um, Carey Price leaving and you know it was, there was a time where, you know, the adults were sean monahan and david savard on the team <laughs> you know, blue jackets also a very young team so you know sean monahan i think coming into it is i think going to be now the fourth or fifth oldest player on the team wow um and again at the age of 29 because the blue jackets is a team full of babies but <laughs> that's a really enticing thing for me is okay we're bringing in someone who like you said he's the adult on the line yes. you know he is a guy that can drive play. He's a guy that can be responsible. And uh, I, the term and the money, it is what it is. It's free agency. You're always going to overpay. Um, is it a year too long and a million too much? Maybe, but but good it's for not him. The end of the world. Good for him for getting paid, right? Exactly. Like, from my perspective, we are, we are pro <laughs> employee and anti employer yes. on this podcast. <laughs> Um, something else I wanted to talk to you about kind of in, in terms of Monahan's game specifically is something that a couple of people mentioned in the YouTube comments, uh, the power play. Yes. Apparently the Canadians power play kind of fell off a cliff a little bit when, oh, the power Monaghan, play. when Monaghan left. Yes. So is that confidently, Canadians... like, is that recently bias or is that <laughs> something that you can like point to as a tangible thing as he left and the power play got worse? Okay. So let me contextualize that a bit. The Montreal Canadiens power play has been abysmal for years. Mm -hmm. um, what had happened was the emergence of a potential improvement in the power play was occurring. And part of that was driven by the fact that they started using Slapkovsky on there more often, right? They started relying on him more. But I think what happened when Monaghan left was, like I said, he was kind of the adult in the room. Like, there were very many situations in which Monaghan would prevent disaster in the power play. And when I say abysmal, I'm talking, like, shorthanded chances. I'm talking shorthanded goals. I'm talking, like, momentum killers. I'm talking, you know, like, two whole minutes where nobody on the ice knows what they're doing. This is that all kind sounding so, so familiar to, right. to me and every Blue Jacket fan. <laughs> so he was tightening it up a little bit, but... I would say, like, he, it, it's less that he was the driver of it, of it, the power play specifically, and more that he was able to tighten everything up. Um, and then in his absence, everything unraveled back. And the lack of, when I say discipline, I don't mean, like, discipline in terms of, like, the rules, but more discipline in terms of playing a clean game and sort of executing. That kind of disappeared, and he was really good at executing. And that's one of the things where... Um, I find that they missed and it's like the, the power play was always going to come back down to earth. So I wouldn't say it's entirely due to Monaghan leaving, but it is partly due to Monaghan leaving. Like it definitely didn't help. Right. And honestly, like I was joking the other day about like, if he can fix the Blue Jackets power play, like he's worth every penny of that contract. <laughs> again, the Blue Jackets power play hasn't been good since Sam Gagne was in Columbus. Oh, wow. Which that tells you how long it's been, you know? <laughs> I um, don't think the Habs Canadian power play has been good since <laughs> Sam Gagne was in Columbus. <laughs> right. Um, again, it's two very similar situations and watching him kind of thrive in that second year in Montreal. Mm -hmm kind of has me really excited about about what can Sean Monaghan bring to the Blue Jackets. I have questions about like where he's going to play in the lineup. Is he going to take ice time away from a guy like Fantilli who you really want to be on the ice in all situations, learning, no. whatever. But the just to go back to the power play for a minute, it's interesting that you said um, he doesn't drive it, but he tightens it up. And mm -hmm. it's, it feels a little bit like, would, would you say it's kind of like he's supervising? The yes. power play, yeah, kind of making exactly. sure that every not 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 being the quarterback, yes. but being I don't know football enough to continue this metaphor. <laughs> I know. But, I, was say, I have no idea. <laughs> like, what do we say? Like center back? Is that a thing? <laughs> right, someone who who is just kind of there to make sure everyone is in the right place. Yes, as opposed to the person who is, he he's he's got the Google Maps. He's not driving the car. Exactly, and that was the thing too. Like not just on the power play. Like I felt that Sean Monahan when he was on the ice. I would have issues with where everyone was, but he seemed to instinctually know where to be, even when other people were making errors and kind of like he would save a lot of plays that way. And so when we talk about cleanup and tightening up and all of that, and specifically on the power play, that's exactly what I would say. I would say the Canadians didn't rely on him to quarterback it or mastermind it really, but they relied on him to keep it clean, to keep it tight, to keep it going. 
Um, and, you know, when you say, like, I'm starting to get excited, I think you absolutely should be excited. I think all Columbus fans should be excited about the Sean Monaghan experience. I only caution it's the injuries that I worry about. Mm -hmm. And that's really the thing. If he can stay healthy, like the Sean Monaghan experiment is going to go so well. He's not going to take away ice time from Fentilli, but rather he's going to compliment, right? He's the kind of guy where he's happy to play on a third line role. He's happy to play, you know, he's happy to play outside of his position as long as his assignment is clear and he's able to really bring out the best in himself is the way that I would put it. Like he's happy to do that. He does not complain. And he really just, wherever you put him, he can he can make it happen and like i love sean manhan like we were so every the whole season we were like when they trade this guy we're going to be devastated when they trade this guy we knew he was going to be traded right like he's a key piece and so we were like we're going to be devastated and then they traded him to winnipeg where he had to play alongside the coward mark shifley not the coward mark shifley and not like go on a long Stanley <laughs> Cup run. Like that was the hardest thing to, to swallow. But obviously there was not really a place for him in, in the Florida Panthers lineup. But still, <laughs> um, like I, I truly think like Columbus fans, like they should be cautiously extremely excited. <laughs> if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. And like this, this off season is kind of, and I've been trying, I've been repeating it over and over kind of to try and convince myself of it. You know, we are tempering expectations yes. this off season. Last season, we got really, really excited. And, <laughs> and they, they all got injured. Off a cliff immediately, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So this season, we are t this off season, we got tempering expectations. And like you say, the injuries are a worry. Um, I would, I would feel cautiously optimistic based on the season he had last year where he was healthy for basically all of it. Like I said, played 83 <laughs> regular season games, which is still very funny to think about <laughs> um, just because of the way that the schedules were when he got traded to Winnipeg. And who he is. Anything... Sorry? And who he is. Like Sean Monahan of all... Right. It's like Pascal Leclerc playing 83 games. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he, he, had, he had a great season in, in Montreal. Uh, he was equally good in, in Winnipeg. Yes. as well on a better team and was you know maybe getting less juicy minutes right. so to speak you know he was still producing he was still putting up points um and was still you know being a a, a positive presence on the ice more from uh, laura about sean monahan in just a second but first i've got to tell you about ebay motors Passion, drive, and patience is the formula for winning championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. They've got superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you are into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. They've got over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, and you're always going to find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every single time, or you're going to get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're going to burn rubber, not cash. They've got all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Apart from the injuries, is there anything that, like, not worries you necessarily, but, like, what is kind of... If Sean Monaghan is having an off night, like, what should we kind of expect from that? Um, from my perspective, like, honestly, and not to not to sort of uh, put an outsized importance on him, etc. But, like, often I found that when Sean, Sean Monaghan was not performing well, it was because the whole team as a whole couldn't get it together. Whether they were unprepared, whether it was, like, the second night of a back-to-back, -back, or whether that was one of the nights where we, you know, we had so many questions about the coaching decisions, et cetera, et cetera. So like, he's the kind of person where I feel like, um, you know how there are some players where like, if they have a bad night, the whole team has a bad night. Mm -hmm. And then if they have a good night, the whole team, like for me, like that's an Andre Markov. He's not that, but it's rather the opposite. It's often when the team has a bad night, there's a point to which like Sean Monahan's the only bright spot, only bright spot, only bright spot. And then when everything around him unravels, like then it's like he drops off and then there's only Nick Suzuki, right? So that's really the thing. And, and I would say it really, how much faith do you have in coaching? Well, we don't have a coach right now. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of the big question, obviously, is exactly. what's the new coach going to do yes. with Sean Monaghan? I'm pretty sure it's going to be Todd McClellan, which I feel 
fine about. I don't hate that. Um, he's probably yeah. the best of, a, of the options. It's not um, inspiring, but it's not like he's a great either. bridge coach. Yeah. You know, he's not going to lead this team to a Stanley Cup, but he might drag them out of the basement. Exactly. And that's kind of what we want right now. So I right. guess it all depends on on how Todd McClellan feels about Sean Monaghan specifically, but everything you've told me makes me think, okay, he comes in, he works hard, he's great in the room. Um, obviously that monaghan Gaudreau connection, we're hoping is still there because yeah. uh, Johnny Gaudreau hasn't had a real center since he came to Columbus, really. And he's also really intelligent. Like, that's the thing. His hockey IQ is fantastic. Like, what he lacks in, like, pure skill, he has in smarts. And I think that's underrated. And I also think, like, you know, we're talking about, like, how much faith do you have in coaching, et cetera, et cetera. Like, if whatever coach it is, let's say Todd McClellan, if it's somebody who's, like, a master tactician, like, I don't think you're adding that much value to coaching Sean Monaghan. But if you have a big picture strategy, that's where I feel like Sean Monaghan fits in because you're kind of giving him that kind of autonomy and freedom to make a lot of his own decisions because he often makes that right one. Yeah, for sure. I honestly, again, I just to kind of wrap it up here, I didn't like this contract as when it was signed. And I was like, man, I would have given him a year, maybe two at one or two million. And the more I kind of think about it, the more I talk to people like talking to Habs fans, um, talking to Flames fans, um, doing a little bit more research by myself, the more I'm like, man, this might be like, it's a good I contract. Think it's a little too, I think I still think it's a little bit too long and a little bit too much. But again, that's just how free agency works i don't get to the columbus tax i think it's just how free agency works you know guys get yeah. it's good for them but like but, think of it this way like a healthy mon if he's able to stay healthy for the duration of that contract that is actually a good value contract for sean Monahan. exactly my guess is he is not completely healthy for the majority for like the entirety of his time in columbus but again i'm gonna knock on wood here because i only i can only use my psychic powers for evil when it comes to <laughs> hockey but um if they can get, you know, he had, what, 59 points this season, I mm -hmm. think? If they could get 50 to 60 points out of Monaghan for the next three seasons, like, I would I would be more than okay with yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, and the other thing, too, is, like, we're talking about points right now, but, like, there's a lot of play without the puck, and some players are just terrible at it, and some players are great at it, and he's great at it, right? Yeah. Like, to me, like... could use more off-puck players, I yes. think. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, like... You know, if anything, if he rubs off on the younger players, that's going to be a positive. If he brings out something in Johnny Gaudreau, uh, that's going to be a positive. If he can mentor Fantilli, that's going to be a positive. If he can, if he can play like sixty percent of the games in each of these years, you're you're you know you're golden. Hundred um, percent. The only thing that does worry me, just to kind of go back to the uh, the injury thing, is Boom Jenner has had pretty serious back injuries i believe he's got a degenerative back condition and this team continues to play him into the ground he gets a season ending injury that we repeat the process the season after you know and it drives me insane and that's the only thing that i worry about with monaghan i'm hoping with new coaching and new, and management, a new front office yeah and a new front things office will I think be that's better cool. like i've liked a lot of what don waddell has done i've liked a lot of what he said um so if they can avoid playing Sean Monaghan into the ground, the way that they play Boo Jenner into the ground, like that makes me feel a lot more confident. Yes. Um, I want to finish off with one, one last thing to just kind of touch back on that mentorship. Could you see, obviously Nick Suzuki is one of the, one of the best young centers in the game right now, but could you see like short, like anything from Sean Monaghan impacting Suzuki? Like was there kind of a tangible thing there where you, where you would watch Nick Suzuki and be like, man, I think he got that from, Monaghan, Monaghan. Got better the more that the longer that Monaghan was on the team with him that's actually quite interesting because I didn't specifically notice it in his play but there were allusions to it in quotes from whether it was the coaching staff or Nick Suzuki or Sean Monaghan himself um where I felt like and and I couldn't really tell if it was like more like oh his work ethic is rubbing off on me etc cetera, etc cetera. but I do think that Nick Suzuki is one of those players that thrives on intelligent hockey plays and Sean Monaghan is also that person. So I would say they might have complemented each other. I don't know necessarily specifically if, you know, Nick Suzuki's game improved at all, but they definitely, the whole team often talked about what he brought in the room. Um, he's definitely a well-liked player by the organization, by the fans. Nobody has anything bad to say about him. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's the opposite of bringing somebody like an Evander Kane into your room, right? 
which that's a cheap shot, but that's based on a conversation I mean, we had earlier no <laughs> <laughs> about somebody saying he would be a good fit for the Habs. And I was like, no, mm -hmm. bring back Sean Monahan. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have him. He's ours now. Um, if people want to keep up with the Habs um, or, you know, if they want to keep in touch with, with Josh Anderson content, because we've made it through an entire Jay and Laura squadcast without bringing up Josh Anderson. Josh Anderson. Um, where can people find you and uh, your show online? So I co-host Locked On Canadians. You can find that wherever you get your podcast, wherever you get this 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 show, actually. On uh, Twitter, we're on Locked On Canadians. And we're going through an exciting time where my old co-host, Scott Matla, is leaving at the end of this month. And I'm getting a new co-host, Ian Boisvert. So please check us out at Locked On Canadians. I'm just really happy that I don't have to keep pretending that Scott and I are two different people. <laughs> we can finally end the end yes. of the summer. There's only one of you now, and <laughs> yeah, you won. I, I am victorious. <laughs> yes, I I won that war. Um, thanks again for coming to help on, Laura. Always a pleasure, and we're gonna have to do this again sooner than literally November because yes. always always have a blast having you on the show. I know. I'm so glad. Welcome back to Locked on Blue Jackets. Uh, we are talking today. Well, we just talked about Sean Monaghan. Now we're going to talk about the other free agent signing that uh, the Blue Jackets decided to make earlier this week. And that is uh, they brought Jack Johnson back home. Uh, defenseman, played in Columbus for a very long time, uh, left, went to Pittsburgh, went to uh, the Avalanche, actually won a cup there. And now he is back. Um, he has played a ton of hockey, uh, signed a one-year, one-way, 775K uh, contract. It's league minimum. It's, like I said, literally one year. Um, yes, he's 37. Um, yes, he's he's not, he's never been, you know, the the brightest of stars in, uh, in the, the Columbus sky or, you know, at all. But still, uh, a lot of people got really mad about this signing and I get it. I get being frustrated. It's not the defenseman I would have picked to be like a depth guy. You know, I like Nate Schmidt a lot. Obviously he got lured to Florida with the promise of, of playing for Paul Maurice again. Um, but here's the thing about Jack Johnson is the, this is a signing. I don't think it's super matters. Um, and, and that sounds harsh, but I'll kind of explain my thinking here is first of all, one year league minimum, that is an extremely variable contract. If they decide, hey, we it's not working, they can get rid of him. They have the cap space to keep him. To they don't have to bury him in the minors. They don't have to put him on waivers. Like he can sit in the for seven hundred seventy five k. He can sit in the press box for all eighty two games. As as far as I'm concerned. Um, that being said, what I am looking for with Jack Johnson is, and I kind of talked about this earlier in the week, is we need a seventh defenseman, or the Blue Jackets need a seventh defenseman. You know, I'm not looking for someone who's going to come in and play, you know, 20 minutes a night on for, you know, 80 plus games. What I'm looking for from Jack Johnson is I would like him to play 25 to 30 games. I would like him to not be an abject disaster on the ice, either defensively or offensively. Um, if they can get out of Jack Johnson minutes, like tied or better, amazing. Two thumbs up. Uh, you know, he's not going to be a game-breaking player. He's not going to be a difference maker on this team. And that's fine. You know, having another adult around is probably a good thing. Like the the blue line is young as it is. It's gotten a little bit older, obviously, with the addition of Damon Severson. Uh, Eric Branson is there. Um, Jack Johnson will be the new oldest oldest guy in town. He is 37 years old, will turn 38 during the season. This is likely his last NHL contract, if we're being honest. Um, I'm like, yeah, I, people got mad about it. I, I don't mind it. Is it the guy I would have chosen? No. Would I give $775,000 to Jack Johnson to play hockey? Probably not. But at the end of the day, this signing doesn't move the needle in either a bad way or a good way. And frankly, sometimes that's the best you can ask for, especially with depth defensemen. 
Um, and he's not going to take, I, I, he shouldn't anyway, again, if we're having a conversation in like December about how he's on the second pairing and David Juracek is in Cleveland or worse in the press box, then we can get mad about it. But as of right now, he's not going to take ice time away from the young defenseman on this team. Uh, you know, Juracek is going to come in and have a good chance to make the team out of camp. Denton Matejok is going to come in and have a good chance to make team out of camp. Having a veteran like Jack Johnson there helps that he's won a ring. I don't generally buy the, this player is good on your team because he won a ring, but sometimes, you know, you need a guy around who's played a lot of hockey and has played a lot of hockey in, in one season, you know, like he's, he has played a lot of hockey he is uh, durable as well, which, you know, is something that is a good thing for the Blue Jackets who have had injury struggle on, on the blue line for, God, basically for forever, you know. Um, bringing him in, he's a guy, like I said, 25 to 30 games, someone gets injured, Jack Johnson goes into the lineup for two or three games and is not an active liability. That's all I'm asking for from him. And I think under, I think under new coaching... Under new defense systems, hopefully, I'm still kind of looking at Steve McCarthy to move on when they hire a new coach, whoever that ends up being. He'll likely bring in his own assistants, which I'm more than happy with. Um, I I think I, 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 I'm not happy about this signing, but I'm not unhappy about it. You know, I, I just I feel very it is what it is. Welcome back, Jack Johnson. He likes it in Columbus. Um his family is from here, like his wife is from here, um, his kids were born here, like, it's nice to have an old, uh, you know, an old blue jacket back, he's not going to be very effective, he's not going to be very impactful, but that's absolutely fine, you know, not every guy, you don't, you don't sign every single player to be impactful, you know, he's not going to break the bank, not going to change the world, just going to be Jack Johnson, he's going to play 30 games, going to be mediocre, and that's fine, um, that's kind of all I've got, on, on Jack Johnson, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about him on, on Monday, probably talk a little bit about the other free agent signing, uh, Dylan Gambrell. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Monsters on Monday as well, kind of what they're going to look like next year, and if we should start to worry about how they haven't really replaced any of the UFAs that walked down there. Um, that's all coming up on, on Monday's episode. Thank you for listening to this episode, for making us your first listen of the day every single day. Locks of Blue Jacket is free and available on all podcast platforms, on YouTube and on Sirius XM. I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-I. You can find the show at L-O underscore Blue Jacket. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockdownbluejackets at gmail.com. And until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.